You're very special, kid. I agreed to take you back to your own kind, so that's what I need to do. And they're gonna take real good care of you. Welcome back to Live Action Star Wars. My name is James. I'm Ralph. And today we are talking about season two of The Mandalorian. A couple of weeks back, a few episodes ago, we did season one. Last episode, was it? Or the episode before that, uh, we did... Oh, no, we did a special episode about the season finale, the making right. of that they did. That was a, a little right. bonus episode for you guys. And for, Yeah, for those of you who are just listening on podcast audio feeds... Um, yeah. You can watch that exclusively at liveactionstarwars.com uh, YouTube channel. Yeah. Go to YouTube, go subscribe, get all those bonus episodes. Yeah, we Disney, put out a ton lately. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we, we did that. And at th the end of that, it just had me hyped to watch season two of The Mandalorian again. <laughs> and yeah. I, I did that in the last three or four days. And right. Ralph, have you? I, uh, I watched... Um, five episodes i made it through five i i have did you start or did you just cherry pick um no i watched through five uh -huh. it i listen I, I it's it's i feel like i have to do yet another sort of disclaimer like um day one when it came to this show and talking about star wars has always been um no like trolling no bitching no complaining about star wars um i find mandalorian and i said this was season one incredibly tough on rewatches for me interesting it's, it's, it's really tough for Ruja. uh but that being said there's a ton that i love about the show and um we'll get into it for sure but mm. um man it's just i can't there's there's mm, I, I have I mentioned my whole thing with the Last Jedi and and uh, how I love like half of the Last Jedi is like my favorite Star Wars stuff ever. Like anything yeah. that involves Ray, Luke, and Kylo Ren, I think yep. is some of the absolute best Star Wars stuff. I absolutely love it. Mm. Um, everything that's not that is some of my least favorite Star Wars stuff. Uh, but when I watch the Last Jedi you kind of get the gist of the story and it's such a long movie yeah. that I tend not to rewatch it because it's such a big, you have to take set aside a big chunk of time to watch it. And um, I'm not going to get anything new on subsequent viewings. You, you so, have seen it or you've, you've absorbed it or you've been a part of the conversation for so yes, long, but and I, yeah don't feel like it's fun enough to like, Ooh, I'm excited to revisit that. Whereas solo, which I love is mm -hmm. the opposite where there's not a whole lot of story stuff there, but it's fun to watch fun. the adventure and the excitement. And you do get a little more like, I don't know. It's there, there's something about the Mandalorian that feels similar to the last Jedi. Like I got the story. The story can probably be told in um, a movie. Yeah. But it's stretched out over well that was our that was the big thing that we said about season one wasn't it is like you could take yeah. those eight episodes whittle them down to four and you've got the 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 a plot essentially um right i think this season doesn't suffer from that as much i think this I one moves <laughs> this moves at a, a much quicker pace i made it much but, farther than last time but <laughs> the season one and this isn't to take away from like the marshal and the passenger the first two episodes I've I struggle when I because I started rewatching Mando season two before we started this podcast just mm -hmm. for fun for me right. and I made it past those two and I was like I get it I've seen it all now and I didn't right. find myself engaged enough to want to carry on not because I wasn't enjoying it it's exactly what you said it's like I enjoyed all of it but I was just like yeah. okay I get it uh, but I do think that from chapter eleven the heiress on yeah it just moves I'll and it this. doesn't i don't think it slows down i think it's all great so what happened was i got to the heiress and i'm like this feels the most like star wars this than any episode i think across the board it's my um, favorite 
it feels it has the feeling that you get with star wars the ahsoka episode amazing feels like uh, a samurai movie it feels like a western it's a weird one because that is it has that same thing that a lot of the season one episodes did where it felt like a, a standalone sort of side story right but it's done so well i think that you it doesn't matter and it does tie into the greater plot right right um but there's something about and I, we've seen it a lot like even in what was the uh the episode after the heiress the, the the siege the siege i was gonna say the heist but it wasn't a heist even they when they're running around shooting at stormtroopers it didn't feel as star warsy as bryce dallas howard's i agree, I, agree I, don't know what that, I don't know what that is no it's no weird because there's is. there's almost more classic iconography in the siege than there is in the heiress yeah. uh do you, do you not think? Like, I think with like all the stormtroopers and the fact that we are we're in a base and we've got the toys, um, and their speeder bikes and things like that. Uh, but them taking fighting. over, them fighting ta- on Taddeus Welliver's ship, yeah, feels I, for some reason just felt more like Star Wars to me. I don't know. I I, I don't know, I, if I don't know what it is either. I but I is. I thought it after is watching it the episode for the first time. I was like, I love this episode. I've rewatched that episode more than anything else yeah. from this season. Yeah. Um, I will just chuck that one on for fun. And I thought, I thought at first, I was like, is it just because I'm enjoying seeing Bo Katan and uh, Sasha Banks and stuff like that? But no, I, I like, enjoy seeing, I enjoy seeing shot Sasha Banks. But um, she's great. I'm not a huge, I'm not a huge Clone Wars guy. No. So and I'm not, I'm not, I'm, I'm like, definitely more of characters. a Clone Wars guy now than I was. Yeah. But it was, it did give me a kick. Like when they first land on the deck of that ship and you see right. the helmet, I'm like, oh shit, here we go. They're doing it. Right. Um, but for me, they, I don't think as far as my hmm. thinking of loving it and it being Star Warsy, um, I don't think that has anything to do with it for my enjoyment. Cause I'm hmm. not, I'm not the biggest um, Clone Wars fan. Yeah. I like Clone Wars. I've seen them all once and maybe a couple like key ones uh, yeah. you know a second time but there was something about i don't know maybe i just needed the new environment i mean it kind of has sort of sh- like similarities to camino but there was something about yeah seeing is it quarren as there's the quarren there's mon calamari there's yeah, yeah. I, I mean that mon calamari and his jumper is amazing right um there's just something about it that felt more Star Wars. Uh, just the fixing of the beat up ship. Yeah. Like it felt more, it felt like he was more in the environment and more part of this world that we haven't seen before, mm. as opposed to walking around in a, de- in a desert, like rewatching the first episode, the uh, Marshall, like there's a whole scene where he comes there in a, a, a Cobb Vanth and the Mandalorian are in the sort of valley, and oh, there's the, valley, the yeah. and there's like the the dogs from Episode Two, yep. coming around, and it's like that's cool, but that seems like a good three, four, five minutes, and I'm like, pick up the pace. There's what am I getting from this? Nothing. Yeah, um, yeah except yeah. that he, we he's communicating with the Sand People, which, which he did in season, season one. one. Exactly. So it's like, so it's like just trim it i don't i don't yeah. need it on the set on second viewing it's not exciting yeah um, because like it's a cool scene and it's nice seeing yeah. that mando has that connection and he's understanding but we did see that and we got it yeah. from the shorthand version of it in and season it one and i liked him talking to the dog oh. but it, the whole thing was like it was suspense for no reason yeah. um but um season the heiress or yeah whatever episode that was the heiress i think it's Three. three three of this um, yeah. it just feels like oh this is something we haven't seen he's doing something different we see mm. a restaurant we don't really see a lot of restaurants mm, in Star Wars. yeah like cantinas i guess probably serve yeah. food and diner stuff, but, it's, but it's fun there was a lot of eating in this episode yeah. which i haven't seen before in star wars you don't see a lot of eating uh maz's castle maz kanada's castle yeah that's it um, they have a uh, the little fruit jabba jabba's munching on a frog yeah but like a place where they serve like, you know, tentacle food yeah. and stuff. I'm and like, oh, like, this is just the, the, the Taco Bell style, like meat cannon as well. Like, but yeah. like the, yeah, their slop It's it's cool. It's yeah. different. It's Star yeah. Wars. 
Yeah, it's it's it felt more fresh. Um, the, the I got a kick out of seeing the the Gazanti Cruiser as well because that's been in loads of like video games and even like the X Wing Miniatures game I think had that and it's I really like the design of that cruiser. Oh, and the effects um, on it. Yeah, it was really amazing. Good. Yeah, the really fact good. that it's all like I don't know, seeing ships, big ships in atmosphere it looks cool. I like seeing that. Right, and I'm wondering if that ship is practical because i know the, the razor crest they did they shot it the way they shot the ilm mm. stuff oh can i mention something real quick Go for it. um i mean full disclosure we're recording this the day that our star war the making a star wars episode dropped yeah um so we're, we're a little bit ahead so i can do the editing and put stuff here like that <laughs> no, i never aimed that. correctly that's why no. I, <laughs> um but in that episode, we talked about how we would like a documentary about ILM. Yes. Literally and was announced was, yesterday, wasn't it? <laughs> the same day. Yeah. The same, yeah. Like the same day we, we released our episode, they announced that Lawrence Kasdan's doing a yeah. six part documentary on Lucas and cool. Yeah. Lawrence Kasdan James, wants to do something. He'll do it. But James Newton Howard doing the music. I'm very excited. Yeah, for that's that. great. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, but them shooting, I don't know if you saw that footage of, um, I'm sure you did, you watched Disney Gallery where they made the, the Razor Crest practical and yeah. shot it with the same camera pullbacks that they did like speeder bikes. Over the old rigs, yeah. So I was wondering if that if that shuttle... Possibly. I mean, it's oh. definitely an element that they've used in other things. Like, it's yeah, not it a new design really or anything. It's great, and I really like it. Um, yeah. I hope that we get to see more of it i mean we know that from throughout this season basically bo katan is building up a little fleet or a, amassing more so in one of the shows i think we'll get to see more of her and her mandalorian like takeover or recapture of mandalore so i get i think we're going to see a lot of these ships again i think i i think i, I and i mentioned this before and it's not i guess it is complaining but uh uh, sort of character of the week interaction. Um, mm. This one didn't bother me because I'm not like weird, isn't it? So closely to the to the Clone Wars. Yeah, but um, the episode one, I took notes for episode one. They're all in caps. They all have exclamation points, and it's just all the references from classic trilogy. That it's just like. Th- those guys holding up their toys and showing, Hey, look, it's this guy. Uh, yeah. It's R five. Yeah. I did. as I started doing it as a joke. Yeah. Cause I just wrote Gamorrean guards. Yeah. That's my first note. And oh, my shit, that's note the whole is, prologue, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah. And then I'm like, R five D four. And then I was like, womp rats. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, this isn't stopping. <laughs> this isn't stopping. I'm like sand people, pod racer engine, targeting computer sound, twin sons, Boba Fett. And I'm like, and then one of them wrote, I wrote, just wrote cliche. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a moment, there's a moment in, oh, the episode, in the first episode where you have the sand people and you have the, the Moss Pelgo, Pelgo, Pelga. Moss, Pel- the, Pelga. You have Pel- the dude and the, the, they don't like each other. So the sand person is trying to load a canister onto a thing and he drops it. No, you idiot. That thing yeah. is explosive. And I'm like, it's, oh my God. In every story like this, it's been you're, told. You're Star Wars. Yeah. There's a there's a there's a shorthand. Yeah. Star Wars should have a shorthand. And I guess I don't know if you could just chalk it up to the fact that they're telling like like 40 minutes at a time. I something. guess. I mean, it's <laughs> it's not like episodes like that. And that was a, a John Favreau directed. That was John Favreau's first directed episode, um, and only oh, to this really? point. Yeah. Oh. Um, so, oh, I wonder if I wonder if there's like a Lucas thing where no one's going to tell him no. I so you have, have a, a long feeling scene. that there is some of that. I think there's a feeling. <laughs> I, yeah, there is some of that too. Listen, though. I love John Favreau. I, yeah, I'm, I do. Currently, I'm currently rewatching show that he has his thumb in, and that is uh, the Orville. Oh, does he have? I didn't know he had anything to do with it. He directed the pilot episode. Oh, there you go. And then, and then he's credited on every single episode as a consultant. Yeah, I mean, you direct so, a pilot of something, you're collecting that check for the rest of the show's length. So, yeah, I'm I'm assuming that he made. I think he may be a producer in some fashion or something. Yeah. But I'm assuming what they do is 
they'll they'll maybe like send him an episode ahead of time and he can say or send him a script and he can say oh you should do this this or this or if they're not sure about something they might just ask him yeah. then sort of thing yeah that's cool um were you aware of Cobb vanth as a character beforehand i'm no. guessing not no no he is it's, such it's, a it's minor a minor book character from like one of the first when they relaunched all the canon stuff uh, in the aftermath trilogy there's a few chapters it's like where we find out that jar jar is now just a street performer in naboo um and <laughs> uh things like that but those there's like these little interstitials and he's a character that we meet and we a lot of the backstory that we get in this is very very close to if not exactly the same as that uh yeah. where he he rescues a town he escapes uh he finds boba fett's armor stuff like that and then he becomes a marshal of a small town um so yeah just having him introduced is really cool that is definitely a story group thing where it's like they've got the idea for a character favreau's probably come up with the story and they're like we've got someone we can put yeah. someone in there like that it's the it's the the whole thing with saw Gerrera. yeah and absolutely then, it's like we've got then, the idea for a character now we can just weave it into the lore yeah. and that is what story group are great for that's and what, what i i like that i yeah. like that idea um but it's not the inserting a character that we knew from terms right. for the sake of it yeah the hera the hera the in bad batch i mean i hate to say it ahsoka i i, I she's to a point, so big. but i think that is that's also like setting up more than they knew like, was coming i feel like my thing is and i mean i th this is just me sp spitballing off the top of my head mm. it's the feloni characters interesting they are the ones that you have Filoni the problems characters yeah but not last Poketan. episode but that's the thing is i'm so not i so don't know that character i haven't seen bo katan on t-shirts and lunch boxes and and yeah, you know fair. my star wars feeds and stuff so um and when and you go back through the clone Rebels. wars yeah when you go back through clone wars she's not actually in it all that much right, right. It's, it's it's when you get into rebels as well that is like oh she's actually a bigger deal than yeah. you thought it's similar to how i mentioned on last episode how i would be okay with more boshek because yeah. he's not he's not he's I enough like i want the universe to be so big that um a character can be involved in like uh one story as a major character uh -huh. but to have someone like pop up again like like ahsoka tano so huge in the clone wars disappears but now she's going to be a big part of mandalorian like it's mm. like i don't like you can't do you can't like it's like four is gum like you can't do all that stuff it's i mean it's one of those things where it's like we had the skywalker saga which obviously followed the skywalker family Right, and it's like now the Filoni saga is the Ahsoka saga, because even through Rebels right. and stuff, she even when she's not in it, she's a big like looming presence kind of thing. Even she didn't bother me in Rebels because I thought hey, she was Rebels great. Was awesome. Yeah, um, it kind of sort of takes place around the same timeline, but to completely disappear from the Skywalker era and then show up sort of after Return of the Jedi. Mm. Um, especially if you're going to tie that character so closely to Darth Vader. Yeah. Um, I actually feel like if we got her in Rise of Skywalker, yeah, I would have been happier. I feel like she needed to be injected somewhere in there. Yeah. Um, Not just one of the, the disembodied yeah. voices. I mean, obviously she should have been in Revenge of the Sith, but the show didn't start until after that. Yeah, it was after the, they had yeah. the ideas, they were working on it, but yeah, it didn't right. start until after. I mean, but that's the thing that I've said about Revenge of the Sith, and we'll get to it when we fully cover that movie. I feel Revenge of the Sith is an unfinished potential masterpiece because I feel like Revenge of the Sith is like half of that story that George wanted to tell, and the other half of it right. is stuff that he took seven seasons or six and a half right. seasons to tell throughout the Clone Wars. And if he'd been able to whittle that down and that, tell that uh, entire thing he could have i mean that, there's some master cuts i've got a version of uh revenge of the sith that includes the siege of mandalore and that arc from <laughs> that someone's edited together masterfully and oh. that like three and a half hour version of the film i love that's my version of revenge of the sith that i watch now right the um i don't do a lot of 
animated recommendations on this show. Um, it's kind of the reason why we're called yeah. live action, live action Star Wars. Um, w- uh, the um, finale episodes with Ahsoka and them sort of like interweaving episode three is, yeah. thinking, is that right yeah yeah, uh, yeah. It, those love... those last four episodes are taking place at the same time as right. revenge of sith also the first episode of bad batch does the same thing yeah it goes and, directly from yeah and i like that as well mm. it feels like there's a bit there's a really fun thing about like like the whole thing i want out of the non-films is side stories that are happening outside of skywalker yeah and it's and the mandalorian doesn't do that because it doesn't overlap Mm. but what it does do that i do like is sort of fills in gaps i would say to sort of um refine episodes uh, or refine like things that you might not get from rise of skywalker yeah um uh I think all of this is leading to Palpatine. I, I mean, yeah. But I think that that's, again, that's the kind of the driving force across a few of the things at the moment. Like, I I think now that we've seen Mount Tantis and Wayland in Bad Batch, I think now, next time we see or hear about Dr. Perishing from The Mandalorian, we'll find out that that is exactly where he was based. He was working there. Yeah, um, on well, the we'll, cloning we'll see, stuff. We'll see like a younger version, or oh, yeah, we'll see. I'll say we'll see the same age version of him in the Bad Batch. Interesting. You think he's and a clone? He's could be cloning himself to continue on his research, possibly. Um, and I feel like the the thing, the finale of the Mandalorian. I, I'm good with where season two ended. I feel like that's the perfect closing to this storyline. Yeah. Of this storyline of this, yeah. this whole thing. I think next time they do it, it will be basically doing the, the Mandalore stuff. Right. But I would love to see part this Pershing story come together and we see the emperor in uh, a tank. Yeah. Like that would be a great final shot. Um, but that's, that's my favorite thing about this show is it's, um, sort of ties to attack of the clones and, yeah. um, uh, the, the rise of Skywalker. Um, it's very good. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we've talked a lot about the first couple of episodes. Uh, we mentioned it last time, the believer, the second to last episode, the Bo Burnham episode, not Bo Burnham. Um, <laughs> that would be a very different comedian on a Star Wars. Right. Why can't um, I think of his name? Uh, do, 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 do Mayfield. Um, Bill. Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Um, My brain was locked too. I wasn't going to try to come up. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was a B. Um, yeah, the second to last episode, Rick Famuyiwa. The only episode of the season not written by John Favreau. Hmm. Um, that was written and directed by Rick Famuyiwa. I hmm. see. I said that the heiress is my favorite, and I think that that stands as my favorite episode of the season and of the show in general. I think the Believer might be the best. It's really, it's really good. I don't know really anything about Bill Burr, but I think his episode, that episode, made made me really like him. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't care for the character in the first, the first time around. I thought it was. I mean, he was just. I mean, he's. I like like Bill Burr did a great job being that, that jerky mercenary. Yeah, yeah you so you don't like, like I, him. You intentionally don't like him. I, yeah, the character is a bad character that I don't care for because that's how he's designed. Yeah, um, it's not like I hated it. It's just he did the job correctly. Exactly. And he then, was he was very good in that role. And then this episode, he, he the, the 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 sort of the 180 like the it yeah. made me feel actually empathetic and towards him. i'm like How? You, yeah you get it you get it completely and it's yeah. it's it's all done i mean it's seeded throughout the episode and he does a really good job throughout the episode but the the inglorious bastard scene 
as as I'll call it, because it's it feels like a scene from a Tarantino movie, um, where he's talking to his former commander who doesn't recognize him about right. Operation Cinder, another thing from other materials, video games, comics, books. Yeah, but you don't need to know what Cinder was all about. Just that it was this big imperial thing that happened in these interstitial years. Right. And that's what's great about it because you don't like that's the same thing as Obi Wan mentioning the Clone Wars. In exactly. Four. Exactly. Like, that's the kind of Star Wars I like. I don't need to sit here and You don't need all of that information. Yeah. If you've got it, if you've if you've know all it's, about Operation Cinder, fine, great. It adds an extra layer, but it's not necessary yeah. at all. It's context clues. Like it's, exactly. It's, yeah, I totally yeah. 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 Um, I don't I don't it, it works for this episode. Mm. But I'm not a huge fan of him taking off the helmet in this episode, only because of the the finale. Yeah, it takes take some of the weight away from that. Yeah, I know what you mean. But I feel like because Grogu wasn't there, and he was like, it was it was all only because like for, I don't think he would have done it for any other reason. In episode, oh man, I, I want to say it's episode two or th three. It might be three where um, they're on the Razor Crest drinking the soup out of the cups. And oh, Mando Mando yeah. lifts his helmet a little bit to drink. And if you look, Grogu tries to look under the helmet. Yeah. So I, think it's, it's I think it's four. I think that's at the beginning of the siege when they're going back to see some old friends. That's right. Um, but it, it, it made me be like, oh, it makes that impact in the final episode so much more when he finally reveals and so i kind of wish that I, I watched the the finale again last night and there's there's a bit where he's he's picked grogu up and he's saying goodbye to grogu and they both they're both obviously upset yeah. about it but grogu just sort of reaches for his face as if to yeah. say like let me see let me see yeah. and it's like yeah. yeah cool um the so i'm thinking i kind of wish that we know for him it's a big deal for him to take the helmet off. He has to take the helmet off yeah. um, to do the face scan. I like but they I wish... tried it without. <laughs> right. As I if that would wish... ever work. I kind of just wish they just shot around it and mm. let him be masked during that. The, Interesting. The, the so, master scene. so he so he lifts the helmet off, but we don't but see it. We see, see it from Mayfield. Mind. We see it from Mayfield's perspective. Yeah. That would have been interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I could see I mean, that. Working. The whole scene where they're sitting there and he's like, it, I, I think it adds sort of suspense to that scene. Yeah. That he's sitting there with his helmet off. But at the same time, it's just like still maybe shoot around. I don't know if he can. Cause I don't know if he says much. No, he doesn't. Cause he's playing dumb. Essentially. He's yeah. playing basically deaf because he tried to bluff his way through it. Yeah. And did just... a terrible job. Like that's, that's the most incompetent we've seen. Dinjar and B is when he tries to blag his role and he's like he's clearly just hasn't interacted with Imperials in that way at all because right. he doesn't know anything. So I don't know. It yeah, it I just I feel like even in season one, the mm. finale of season one, where he shows IG eleven his face, like even then I'm like, I know for a season one finale, people kind of would want that. Yeah. But I think story wise, man, can you imagine that? I mean, I guess it doesn't matter because the impact was still there for me when I watched the season two finale mm. when he takes off his mask or his helmet. But um, yeah, it's tough. It's I tough. still, I still welled up in the finale when they're saying goodbye and everything. Like I, I it still hit watching it again yesterday, um, which is impressive because I've seen it three or four times. We watched that special right. recently, so I've seen that scene a bunch um but watching yeah. it in the context of the whole episode it's still it's still played it still really really worked for me yeah peyton reed peyton yeah. reed directed that episode um which is hilarious because he did the ant-man movies and he did um, the passenger as well the, the passenger which is like a monster the most, like what i think the mandalorian is in my mind yeah episode <laughs> is, of the week kind is, of yeah this other per you need this thing this other person you have to help out in order to get the thing you want and yeah, then let's just quest. let's just action for a half hour and then whatever um but the the, the finale oh i was gonna say peyton reed um directed a bunch of episodes of upright citizens brigade 
Oh, okay. The, the show from like 1998. Yeah. So he's got um, that comedy, those comedy chops essentially. Right. And so it's weird seeing him do that finale. I assumed it would have been like a Favreau or it a felt Tony tackling that. Yeah. It felt but, like it would have been. But I guarantee you they were on the set the oh, whole yeah. time. I mean, we've seen behind the scenes, they were both there the whole time. Yeah. It, yeah. That's that's like George Lucas not directing Return of the Jedi. It's like, right. well, but you did. Yeah, we saw that footage. Yeah. He was like looking through the lens. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, if that's the choice that you want to make, it's not what I would do, but it's backseat directing. Yeah. But my favorite thing is that he did an episode of UCP, UCB called Magomra versus the Fart Monster. <laughs> okay. And then which is the which is like a kaiju fight between a hillbilly lobster okay. and a guy who just keeps farting. Great. And for him to do that and then like <laughs> 20 years later make me weep like a child. Absolutely. Uh, the sight of a uh, uh, the sight of a a beam of light on a monitor. Like the writing on that episode it's just like Favreau dangling a little action figure in front of me yeah. and slowly revealing that it's it's the it's the seeing the X-wing and just being like they give you so many chances to doubt what who it is mm. like you're not really clear who it is like obviously it's an X-wing so it's got to be Luke right but we've but, seen X-wings in the show yeah is it so oh it my god be, are they gonna have Favreau wolf? come in yeah is Favreau <laughs> gonna come in and save it himself like what the fuck so then you see the cloaked figure like, okay, it's definitely a Jedi. Yeah. And then it's definitely green lightsaber. So now the things where it's like, is it Ezra? You can't do that. And then obviously we all know it's Luke, but we're, for, but internally for me, I'm like denying it. There's no way yeah. it can be Luke. They, they can't do that. They can't do that. We would have known about it. We would have heard something. We would have seen something. But then they have the, the, that reveal of him taking off the cloak. It's like, okay, this is definitely Luke. That's his hilt. He's got one glove. It's the Return of Jedi outfit. Here comes the face. And it's yeah. like, what are we going to see? What are yeah. like Sebastian Stan? It probably should just be Sebastian Stan. And let's just I mean, if they're going to do more, it should be. But like, yeah, I think he's kind of busy. And uh, I think, did you see the interview with Sebastian Stan where they talked to him about all of that? No. And he's like, I'd be fine with doing it, yeah. but only if Mark basically gave him the rub. If, if Mark said, yes, you. Um, but at this point, it doesn't seem like they have any intention of doing that. Like the the guy that they had on set mm -hmm. seemed like he was there. Mark was putting over his acting talents. Like we'll see if that's just him being kind or not. But like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if they need to with the deep fake technology and stuff that they're using again now. Get man, it needs to be. If they can get it like hundred percent, that'd be great. Yeah. I'd just, I'd like to see them go back and do like basically a special edition of Rogue One now. But they can do it without letting anyone know. It doesn't have yeah. to be a big fanfare. They just, could just fix change it. the file on Disney Plus. Look at Gene's guy. Yeah, exactly. Gene's guy was not in this version that we watched. Um people saw Gene's guy. He was there for a week. Like he's they went he in was, and wiped it out without yeah. a big fanfare. It wasn't like Star Wars made an announcement. Uh we look at McClunky. Yeah, McClunky was a uh, was just something that then just happened. Yeah, so if they were to do that to Rogue One, like you're just sitting there watching Rogue One on Disney Plus one day, and all of a sudden it's just like it looks a lot better than I remember. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then just and then just let the word of mouth get out, and then people will go watch it. Mm. And get I like it. I'm, I'd be into it. Um, let's talk about the Boba Fett of it all. Right. We had a tease. We had a tease. Liking Boba Fett. I love the design. I. I think as a young kid, I really liked him, but then I sort of soured on him pre prequels. Um, so sort of the mid nineties, I would have just been like, he's a bit nothing. He's just so a like nothing power, character. Like the powers of the force. That era. Yeah. Like, yeah, like nine, where, they start, where they release like Luke, Leia, Han, Darth Vader, and then like Boba Fett. Yeah. Like he's and, in like the main line. I'm like, I always like the design. I but then I, that was always my thing, and that was until this season. I think really that I was like, he's a 
he's a he's a fan favorite that people have picked up way more than they need to but he's a great design um i get why people like him but like all the oh boba fett's the best i'm like is he is he, he though hasn't done anything I yeah mean, exactly he did catch, why did catch han solo he did beat han solo at his game and into han solo is cool so yeah. maybe that's uh, maybe that's. But I mean, like... did he? That felt more like Vader did that, and then he just took. Well, I mean, he's the one that was able to track the yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The garbage cool. like that's yeah. that's that the cool. one thing. Yeah. Um, and then, but, but then you have until like, the... yeah until this season, and I think he's what? great. Well, I mean, don't forget his storyline in Attack of the Clones. I mean, yep, he's yep. He um, <laughs> I that image, that image of Boba Fett with the helmet in the in the arena it's mm. like it's great that's that's one of those one perfect shot things it's that's like my favorite george lucas stuff is like he doesn't have to single we frame have to, we don't have to do the whole backstory on how he became a villain it's like like cruella the movie cruella mm. you get these sort of or or maleficent like you get any of those like, yeah yeah like they're yeah um he just kind of tells you like boba fett's a clone He's mm. a kid mm. and his dad got killed by a Jedi. Like that's awesome. Yeah. So it's, it's such a, such a great shorthand that the little Boba Fett stuff doesn't even bug me. <laughs> the no. whole... Like I wasn't a fan of him throughout the Clone Wars and seeing him interacting with, for the same reason that you don't like seeing all these characters. Like I don't yeah. need, I don't need him training with Bosch and um, interacting with all of these bounty hunters that we know, like him with Aura Singh is fine because Aura Singh's not a character later on. We, we she's a prequel era character, right. but we don't need him interacting with those guys. That's the thing is, if Aura Singh shows up in like a Mandalorian, I'm like, she's dead. Like she was killed by Becky. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, I forgot the fool killed her. But that's um, another great thing is it's just mentioned you know you don't yeah. see it and that's perfect um, that's the way that you do it but in this but you could have I spider think... legs <laughs> <laughs> spider spine um i i really like in this all of his stuff and the dealing with him and his mandalorian side of things right it's really the only character thing we get in the show other than his you know want to protect the child we the first i think we mentioned it on our season one recap is i felt like his character is sort of paper thin um are we talking about he, din yeah he was a oh, family. Okay. Was, yeah yeah um but in this in this we do get um a little bit more about who he is and how his belief in what he believes is mandalorian culture is so that's strong, it, but it, it, it ties into all the though. stuff all the stuff with Bo Katan and the oh you're one of them and the the children of the watch we find out a little bit and it's like okay cool so that ties into Death Watch which we know she used to be a part of yada 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 all the yeah. Mando lore but that's why I like all the the Boba Fett side of that as well where they're like you're a disgrace to that armor you're not a Mandalorian he's like never said I was <laughs> never claimed to be my dad was and then we find out that Jango was a foundling which I I like that fits that's great that's cool yeah um. But not like a true born blood Mando, um, right? And the yeah. um, Boca's hands line to him in the finale, where it's like, "You're a clone. I know your voice. I've worked alongside and I fought against your you people." Um, they obviously don't know that he's like the the unaltered Django, yeah, thing, which is different. That's why he says my father, and they're like, "Don't you mean your donor?" And he's they're like. No, I mean my father. He raised me. I'm his son. I'm him, essentially. Yeah. Um, but I liked, I liked all of that with Boba Fett. I think it gave him a lot more depth, and he's now a character that I actually care about and I'm interested in. Yeah, it's 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 tough because uh, um, we like the Mandalorian armor looks cool. Yeah. Boba Fett looks cool. We know nothing about him other than what we saw in attack of clones. I don't recall any of this stuff from clone wars with Boba Fett. Um, I, I know he was sort of a, he was more of a, like a teenage, he was just a bright still like Daniel Logan, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Um, and with my main complaint with the Mandalorian and them, not really his character being paper thin. 
So it didn't make me want to like it didn't make me like Boba Fett anymore because I'm just yeah. like, oh, this is okay. this could be this could just be Boba Fett because I know nothing about this character other than he was a foundling. Um so getting more info on Boba Fett this time around, um is it's got me a little more excited for the book of Boba Fett. I don't know so, what the book of Boba Fett's gonna be if, because if- <laughs> If the you told that... me before this season that we were going to get a Boba Fett show, I'd be like, of course we are, because people like Boba Fett, but I don't care. Whereas right. now at the end of this season, when you get the title card and you see basically what he's up to, at least in that that bit, I'm like, cool. Right. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to I, watching it. I, I, I don't know what the show's going to be because it's hilarious because I don't like books. I've mentioned this on the show. And the season ends with the Boba Fett, who I never really cared much about, sitting down with the word book in front of him. And I'm like, <laughs> is <it> just <laughs> like, what is this show going to be? I mean, he's, he's going to be Jabba, but like the new Jabba, but Jabba just sat there. Like, so mm. what is like when I, every time I think of the book of Boba Fett, I think it's just going to be us sitting there staring at his throne for, you know, eight or nine episodes or whatever. I'm like, what does he need to go do when he's got the throne? Yeah. So is it going to be how he gets there? Maybe I think, that might be I think there's going to be a lot of flashbacks and like from what they've said recently, I don't know if it was official or not, but it's like, there's going to be a lot of basically him, uh, essentially exacting revenge on people that he feels has wronged him. Right. I'm, uh, I think we're going to get a very vengeful Bob of that. I, I'm looking forward to a trailer. Yeah. And I'm wondering, I, I don't I don't like these things, but um, like trailer reactions. Because mm. um, usually when I watch a trailer for the first time, I just sit there and watch it. Yeah, same. I don't yell at the screen like, oh, there's... I don't commentate over it. Yeah. But um, I'm wondering if we should do a bonus episode. I think we should. Where I we think... can just, we can watch it and go yeah. through it live. Um, it similar to feeling, how we did yeah wait. similar to what we did for invincible on our other show right on yeah. invincipod invincible yeah go subscribe yeah, yeah yeah we'll do that yeah um cool so i'm excited to see when, do you, th- show when do you think we'll get that do you think we're gonna get that at the end of like after visions is wrapped up i would expect probably probably i, th- I would I think say that keep the cycle yeah they, it's funny how they how they do these things um Mm. now and how you can kind of wait and you kind of expect like when you're going to see the next big thing based on what movie's coming out like marvel does that like um yeah you're not going to see anything like two movies ahead essentially like when we go see eternals we'll see the the full crazy trailer for spider-man yeah um and uh and uh um so I'm assuming, yeah, once Visions is done. Because I was like, oh, maybe when we see Eternals, we'll get a Book of Boba Fett trailer. I'm like, no, that's a TV show. That's not how it works. But why not? Who why knows? Not? Who knows? Um, yeah, I'm excited for it. I'm excited for Boba Fett. I, I, I don't am. Know, I don't know what the season three of Mandalorian would be. I, I mean, at this point, I don't want to hazard many guesses because I think it will relate to Book of Boba Fett. I think some stuff in that will set up some stuff, but I think it will be mostly like the concurrent. I think we're going to see, at least in the first episode, the the immediate aftermath of the stuff with the Darksaber and dealing with the Mandalore side of things. Right. Um, Sabine Ren, I would be fine with making an appearance. Sabine um, would be great. I think she's going to be held over for Ahsoka. I think we're going to see more of Sabine in Ahsoka. But if she pops up in both, then I'm great with that. I prefer it just to be Ahsoka because those characters are tied together. Yeah. And that's another thing. It's like, do these, are these characters tied together? Like, No. Other, well, Bo, world here. Bo, Bo-Katan and Sabine have some history. Right. Um, so you could do it through her, but then it's taking yeah. the focus away from Mando. And it, but right. then he just slots into his audience surrogate role that he's yeah. had in the past. So. It should be interesting to see a, a Mandalorian show without Grogu in it. Yeah, I, I'm. How successful can that be? Because even when he's not yes. in it, the you leave the audience saying, "Where is Grogu? We want to see Grogu." And the thing that he's the, the thing Poochie. That, the thing that Grogu like the purpose that Grogu serves is it allows the Mandalorian to talk to somebody 
so that we understand what his motivations are, what he's thinking. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so if he's just by himself, he's going to need somebody to bounce off of. Otherwise, when he's flying in a ship to the next planet to go do something, this is going to be in silence. Yeah. Well, that's something that we get more of in this season than in season one. He's still stoic and quiet, even when Grogu is there, because he's not used to that. Whereas mm-hmm. as this season goes along, a lot more of the stuff in the Razor Crest, he's he's way more chatty because he's got right. his little buddy. He's got his kid there with right. him. Um, like the scene where he sends Grogu in to try and fix the wires yeah. and stuff like that. It's great. But he's even before that, he's just talking to it. Like he knows that he yeah. can't really respond, but he's talking to him like I don't know, even like people talk to their dogs when they're in the car or something like that. It's like, yeah, um, mm-hmm. he's become way more comfortable with it, and it's great. I like seeing it. Right. So we're we're not going to get that next season because I don't I don't want Luke to be in the ma- next Mandalorian. I think, I think we'll Luke get should go off to his own thing. Well, I think we're going to check in. Out. I think we're going to check in. I think we'll see him maybe like one episode or something. Um, I would be shocked if we get an entire season of the Mandalorian without seeing Grogu. Um, we'll I don't know. I don't know. It's that whole thing about like, can there be a star Wars movie without a lightsaber in it so far? No. Um, but I'd like to see it. Right. I would like, I would, I'd be really interested in seeing right. a season without. And if you can do stuff, I mean, there's enough other plot points that they've got that they can do. But it's whether or not whether or not they'll be interested, like people, like the mass public, like because as we've said, we're Star Wars fans, we're in for all of it. But there are so many people that are Mandalorian fans because of Grogu. Yeah, there's two live action Star Wars movies that don't have lightsabers, and we'll get to those eventually for sure. And that's the Ewok movies. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but but that's the thing is one of the reasons why I like those Ewok movies is because it's like over here, these are characters you met. But this is what they're gonna. This is what they do outside of all of this empire stuff. Yeah. Um, the um, I, I I was gonna say I'm excited for this if it's still happening. This Ryan Johnson trilogy. I I really hope it does. I because I wouldn't be surprised at this point if it doesn't. But I really do hope it does. And I, I like hearing like, you say that as someone who doesn't love The Last Jedi, hearing you be of, excited about that. Too. One of my issues with Last Jedi, as, as I mentioned, is so long. I feel like Ryan Johnson felt like he had one shot at Star Wars and he put every idea concept he had mm. in it because it was his one shot. Um, now, if you say, if you tell him, hey, you have three movies to tell a story he could really tighten up those three stories to make a really nice story. Cause I want to be cohesive. I love, yeah. I haven't seen the blo- the brothers bloom, but I like all of his other movies. Brothers um, I, have some great. Issues, I have some issues with looper. Um, I have some issues with looper uh, upon rewatch telekinesis thing. Yeah. Like, that's one too many things you're stacking yeah. on the sci-fi it, thing. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit too Akira almost, but like, um, yeah, I, I loved it at the time. I think it was my favorite movie of that year. Um, yeah. but on rewatches, I, I struggle to, get through it completely and and then he was sort of picking up what jj abrams left him and so he had to like fit a certain thing like he wanted to do certain star wars things Mm. but maybe force awakens didn't allow him to do exactly what he wanted so he had to maybe twist some of the characters and stuff to get what he wanted to do but i feel like if you're just like here you have full reign to create your story and you have three movies to do it like it's going to be awesome. Let him breathe. Let him, let him tell his own story without being pigeonholed into, you know, these sort of things. Um, So I think we should save that for our eventual last Jedi episode. Eventual. Who picked that? Was that you? Uh, you, I think that's, I think that's on me. Okay. Okay. So we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, Anything else about season two of Mandalorian? Um, I definitely like it more than season one. I feel like it has more of a focus. I think um, I like the pace of it. Just watching it all through in a short space. It's weird because I I love the weekly release of these shows. I don't want them to all drop at once. The, the old Netflix model. I love. Help us out. uh, Yeah, exactly. I love a weekly release. Um, But I think this one lends itself to a binge on rewatch. Um, I, I, I tried. 
I know, I really but you also gave yourself a very short window. So like, that would have been a super big. I mean, I the, the the problem is is that I didn't need I had a two week window and my heart <laughs> wasn't in it until I'm like, I have to do this. That's and I, exactly I, what I did. And the thing is the next episode that I that I would watch would be the Ahsoka episode. And I'm like, I think it was just like I know how it goes. Do I yeah. wanna sit here and uh it's hard to describe man it's also i think it's also worth pointing out now that you have talked about each and one of these episodes individually for your patreon only podcast wasn't it right is it patreon only yeah if you want to hear about me and james talk about just that episode episode, yeah um there's the link patreon.com slash casinos or just go to youtube.com slash casino skunk that episode is kind of the backdoor pilot for this show yeah yeah, and Invincipod. It and Invincipod. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the first time much we ever in, recorded together. Yeah, much in the same way that the Jedi is the backdoor pilot for the Ahsoka series. Right. That episode right. has led to two podcasts. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I love seeing... Yeah, um, I, don't, I don't hate this. I love this show. Yeah. But um, once... <laughs> One. Fair. It's, That's it's, completely just, it's fair. just a little tough to watch it on on subsequent viewings because i know everything i need to know about the character there's not really a lot of nuance uh yeah. there's a lot of traveling in in the first episode of the marshall uh uh boba door, fett or not boba fett din Djarin says to cobb vanth he says um uh we he says we can help the um the sand people yeah. but your village already agreed to help us and then they cut to them taking the speeder bikes back to the city. And I'm yeah. like, why am I seeing this? Like George it's... Lucas, George Lucas would just go, we, we, uh, I got help from the people at your town. Yeah. Why? Bang. They're there. <laughs> why? Yeah, exactly. And then that's it. You're um, on to the next thing. You mentioning wipes. I, it noted, I noticed it a lot in the siege, the Carl Weathers directed episode. Um, there's yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of Lucas wipes in that. Too episode. many back to backs. They have them back to yes. back. Like they'll cut to a shot and then do the wipe and then like you know, it's is, too much, too much in that but to the point where, yeah, I love them. But when they become noticeable like that, it's, yeah. you know, that you're overplaying that hand a little bit. Uh, that's one little note from that. The other one is we're both big lost fans uh, and seeing the man in black Titus as pop up right uh, in the air. Yeah. Didn't know it was coming. When you see him on the bridge, I was like, ah, oh, shit. It's I saw him. him. I was like, "Is that him?" I'm yeah. Like, Why would he be just a uh, imperial officer? Love it. That was him. Love it. And, and he's the great. Guy, the guy in the back in the cargo hold is uh is uh was a writer and performer on Late Night with Conan O'Brien. I was going to say he did he a lot of the Conan O'Brien stuff. Comedy guy, wasn't he? Yeah. He coked up werewolf was one of his characters. <laughs> That's amazing. He was also like the bartender on um I want to say Parks and Recreation. I think that's where I'd he's, seen him. He's been around. Yeah. And he might also be the bartender on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. I could be wrong, but I feel like he's been a bartender on both Possibly. those shows. Uh, Michael um, Schur has his hand in both of those. So, yeah. Be. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it's like I like this show. I just find rewatching is a little bit rough. Um, that's fair. Watch the Orville. Highly I, I still haven't i've got it on my list of things to get to um, um john favreau yeah. directed the first episode the pilot here's the thing I, I i and this isn't an orville show but i've been i seriously i i watched that's what you were binging this last couple of weeks not even that like the last week i've watched through <laughs> one and a half seasons wow so I'm almost and this is network it. length seasons right no, no. The oh, first okay. season's like ten, and the second one's like thirteen or something. Oh, okay, that that definitely makes me want to watch it more. <laughs> but um, like I'm not the biggest Family Guy fan. Like I'll watch and I'll laugh, and I don't yeah. really. I'm not into Seth MacFarlane. Uh, I, I'll let you know. Like the pilot episode, John Favreau's episode is loaded full of jokes. Okay. Um, and I'm assuming that's what they did to sell the show to the yeah. to the network. Yeah, it's like see, it's like Family Guy. It's the Family yeah, Guy. Yeah. It's Family Guy meets Star Trek. <laughs> Episode two probably has fifty percent less jokes. Episode okay. three has maybe like five percent of the episode is jokes. <laughs> like okay. they immediately get into the plot. It's a drama. Cool. 
it's a drama except the people talk like real people and there are some jokes so i i a lot of people praise it for basically being the best star trek show on tv uh, i'm not a big star yeah. trek guy i never have been so okay cool cool here's the deal I tried. I've tried so many times to watch yeah. every version of Star Trek. I could Same. not get into it. Um, watch the Orville. Love the Orville. Never miss it. Cool. When as soon as it drops, I watch it. Um, when quarantine hit, because I got used to Orville and sort of that kind of storytelling, a crew mm-hmm. on a ship, uh, I went back and I was able to watch all of the original series of Star Trek, um, which I loved. And I can't really get into the other ones, but yeah. um, I mean, the Orville. The pilot is a crowd pleaser, and I feel the rest are Star Trek, but they talk like people. Cool. So, so. sold. Um, yeah. So that's a little plug for the Orville. I will check yeah. it out eventually. John Favreau, love him. Yeah, he's a, he's a cool dude. More Favreau, more Favreau. Everyone yeah. likes Favreau. Um, you want to talk about our next episode? Yes, let's do it. What have we got next? I believe we've got something special. I'm excited. Now I told everybody on our last episode that we were definitely going to do this John Williams documentary where we lied, saw the mini rig lied to us, but something's come up. Um, I did not pick the next episode. No, uh, I didn't uh, pick the next episode. So, but it is, it'll be my week. It'll be still take my place. So okay. I don't get to pick the next one after this. <laughs> um, we will be watching the Muppet show episode starring Luke Skywalker and Mark Hamill. What? Yeah. I, d- I I know of it. I know that Mark Hamill was on the Muppet show. I didn't realize that it was he was playing both. If you go if you go on Disney Plus, I don't know which season it is, but you can okay. find it. It's um, on Disney Plus though. Cool. But I believe the 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 title description does say with guest Luke Skywalker and okay. Mark Hamill. Okay. Um and the reason why we're doing it is because we're going to have a guest. Ooh. Uh Patrick Cotner from uh, the George Lucas talk show picked this episode. He was, he just sent out a tweet saying um, he's like, Hey, who, if you have a podcast, I swear I'll be a good person and not be a jerk. <laughs> and I said, and I said, do you like star Wars knowing full well? He does. Yeah, and he's he me. does a show called the George Lucas talk show. I think he probably likes right. star Wars. Here's a, here's an interesting story I want to tell you about. Um, I don't know if you know this or not. So we listen to star Wars minute, me and you. Yep. And Patrick and the guys from George Lucas Talk Show were on guest hosts for a week on uh, The Last Jedi. Yep. It's just wrapped up recently. And so I listened to, I was listening to an episode. They tweeted about it. I noticed there was a little audio thing in there that where some dialogue got replayed. Anyway, I just tweeted at Pete, who produces the show. And I said, hey, this happened. And I got a response from... Patrick. Patrick responded to that tweet. Okay. And he said, um, I don't know about the technical stuff, but I'm glad you enjoyed the show. This is coming from a Dharma Lars fan. Hey! So Patrick apparently Mutual. used to listen to my show from 2006. And, which is where so, I first discovered you in as well. So I might, I might say since we're lost fans, there might be a little bit of lost talk. I'm not going to promise it, but if it comes excited. up, it comes up. There's a big poster there. If I tilt it in my camera up, you'd see a lost poster. Have, You've got a lost I have poster. My box of I have my, my Blu-rays and my, I mean, you had a podcast with Jorge pop. Garcia. <laughs> I have his pop. It's really weird <laughs> because I've known Jorge. Your mate. <laughs> Jorge has been my friend longer yeah. than I was a fan of lost. Like I, like me and Jorge became friends around season three yeah you know so there's three seasons where he was hurley and then it's been now just your friend jorge Jorge. yeah yeah um so yeah that pop also while you're talking about damalas i'm excited because you guys are starting up on the damalas feed the old damalas feed which you guys covered sweet tooth uh Mm -hmm. which was great you're carrying on the comic book adaptations and you're doing what was and might still be my favorite comic book of all time, Why the Last Man. The adaption of that is finally coming out. And that starts at the end of this month or soon. So, of course, me being on brand, I've never read Why the Last Man. Of course you haven't. <laughs> How long did um, you work in a comic book shop? Oh, like three years. Oh, wow. I, 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 did, I, did, I did seven. I did, <laughs> I did read the other things. Yeah. But um, 
it was tough getting into new things. I also didn't read Sweet Tooth, but um, no, I didn't read what's great about that is um, we're we're a little bit behind on Why the Last Man as far as they they released three right off the bat, and then but they release them on Monday, which we usually as Darmalars record on Sundays. Okay, so we're we're even a whole week behind. That's perfect so, because it's not dropping in the UK until the end of the month because we're getting it on Disney Plus on Star the channel on that because okay. it's a Hulu FX show. Um, okay. We we're getting it on that and we're no, we it doesn't start until the twenty something over here. So, so I'm gonna I'm gonna, gonna wait right and listen episode to episode. Yeah, I don't know if we're getting um, three at once or how they're dropping it over here. Right. Uh, it's yeah. So um, we're just at a different pace. Yeah. I think I feel like the Darmalars. But that's the Darmalars. That is the Darmalars. Um, but you can see that here. One of these days, I'm going to figure. I'm, I should always use my right hand and point the opposite direction. That way, I always miss the. <laughs> I mean, technically, I could put something up here. Or you could put it here. Like, I mean, there was. I'm pretty sure in the last okay. episode there was something here. <laughs> I'm going to stop doing that because it's not Don't. a joke. I'm going to stop. No, because it's not it. our joke. But it's it's an it's in it's a loving nod. It's a loving nod to Star Wars Minute, and they're they like to any line in Star Wars that's repeated. They like to repeat ninety four, long time for a long time. But I, do you find yourself doing that in real life? Yeah. When yeah, same. Yeah. If whenever repeat. anyone says long time, I will just repeat long time. Yeah, it's bad. It's it's I mean, a problem when, they, when they've covered. Pete and Alex, we love nine, you. Nine episodes or nine movies. Yeah. So far, they've they've covered nine movies. Yeah. One minute at a time. Yeah. And you listen to it every day. It's going to get stuck in your head. <laughs> yeah, it really, yeah. really is. But it's I don't know. Thousands of episodes at this point. No, well over a thousand episodes at this point. I literally have that clip of Obi-Wan saying long time. <laughs> set aside in my main folder so I can easily grab it anytime. <laughs> it's just it. right there. <laughs> and I put it on your shelf a couple times. And then one time I put it here in my usually the curtains are open. <laughs> oh my God. There was an episode. This is I mean whatever. There is an episode. We're just in the we're in the the back end. Yeah, here's what happens. So this air conditioner right here that you see behind me, mm -hmm. the intake is in this hallway on the floor. So okay. when the air conditioner's on, it sucks the curtains open. It just sucks the curtains in. It looks stupid. Okay. So if I'm running the AC, I'll open the curtains so you can see you can see what's back there. So right now my air conditioning is off because it's not getting sucked into the intake, and it's actually getting really warm now that the sun's coming through. Um, there was one episode where I had the curtains open, and my wife walked through in her pajamas. <laughs> I don't know if anybody noticed this. Did anybody? Did you notice? I noticed. <laughs> Only when we were I, recording. No. <laughs> Oh, you remember when you were recording. But yeah. what I did was I did a screenshot of this, <laughs> cut it out, yep. and overlaid it when she walked by, and then <laughs> overlaid it again when she walked back. And it, so now if the door's open, I need to remember, if she's coming through, I need to go like this so Just my give shoulder yourself. doesn't block the, the, the effect overlaid over my arm. And, and this is episodes. this is the extra effort that Ralph puts into the video versions that you do not get if you're only listening to this podcast. I mean, obviously, I don't mind you seeing my wife because we did a whole episode where she's doing the saber build. But I feel yeah. like for for her, she doesn't. She probably doesn't want to be. She on. doesn't want to be on here in her pajamas. No, because she's she's at work right now in the okay. next room over, <laughs> wearing her you know business up top pajamas on the bottom zoom of course thing. yeah yeah and so i just the, like, the 2020 oh, office attire but so i can put anything anywhere so if uh, uh <laughs> in, the comments, <laughs> in, the, <laughs> in the comments section of this episode i will take i'll i'll take someone's request of me dropping something into the next episode with patrick oh and um I'll do. I'll take one request and I'll hide it somewhere in the episode. So keep an eye out for that. You That's have great. to comment on this episode, though, um, and you have to have listened to us ramble after we talked about the Mandalorian. Yeah, and I think this episode will be up by the time we record that one, so we should be good. Um, should cool. Hey, um, so in order to leave comments, head over to liveactionstarwars.com. I did it wrong the wrong way. Liveactionstarwars.com. 
um, that takes you to, I feel weird because I say, go subscribe at liveactionstarwars.com. And that's not a YouTube page. So I feel like people on Twitter, when I say go subscribe to liveactionstarwars.com, it's like a Patreon thing where they have to pay. It's just the link to the YouTube channel. YouTube. Just YouTube. So go to YouTube and subscribe to the, the video version if you're listening to this on your uh your podcast feed continue listening wherever you want to listen to it yeah. um those yeah. of you who are normally uh spotify listeners but haven't been able to find us on there hopefully that will be getting sorted soon we don't know spotify's rubbish for podcasts i don't, I don't know i have no I mean, idea either. me neither i've um, never been able to figure out spotify well spotify like what's weird is all of my shows are on spotify so Dharma Lars, all right, let's do a podcast, Kaiju podcast. They're all there. But for some reason, Invincipod and live action Star Wars just won't get on there. And I don't Which know Which is weird what it because is. A, a previous show of mine is on there as well. So it's not like it hates mm-hmm. me. <laughs> it's, it is bizarre. Yeah, maybe. I can't do it. But then I'll also think like how much money they spend on a certain somebody yeah. to do podcasts there. And I'm like... Do nah. I need to be on Spotify? So let me know. Tweet at Live Action SW. If you absolutely need um, Live Action Star Wars on Spotify, I will definitely do my best to try to get it on there. Um, if not, it's fine not being there. There's, um, there's loads of other places. And then I think I just I just submitted to Acast. I'm going to see if that works because I, I, I applied there and it didn't really show up right away. But... Wait. Go to Live Action SW. You can find them, and all. it'll show you everywhere where you can subscribe. But yeah. really, really, the YouTube is is the fun place because you get that's to see, the that's the main one. You get to see Obi Wan same long time, long time. All right, um, I think that's everything. Twitter, I think that is it. Live Action SW. Um, um, a couple weeks ago, we got a, a review from John Norton um, on Instagram Stories. Uh, yeah. If you if you want to tag us, do that. Let us know what you think of the show. I suppose do shout the out to the old Metro Buzz as well for John. Thank yeah. you, John. Um, I, I, it's like leave a review on iTunes. That's a yeah. Thing. We love the, we love seeing that stuff. We'll always we're always grateful to see yeah. shares and things like that. We always like seeing it. It's good. Right. It's great. Okay. Makes us feel good. And then yeah. Um, as we get closer to the book of both that we'll let you know our plans for that and um Some yeah, fun I, guess stuff that's it. I have nothing else to say i just and this is the most rambly we've ever been at the end yeah this i mean we, i don't feel like we detracted from the talk but this is just us this is what we do generally yeah. when we finish recording so now you're just getting it as a bonus at the end yeah i was thinking because i have all these recordings mm. of taking all the bits from before and after shows and making a super cut of just before and after shows. This is our 10th episode, by the hey. way. Hey. So, yeah. Yeah, do it. Just <laughs> just a, a bonus episode of Rambles. Yeah, there's some things I'd have to cut out. Definitely. So. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Cool. Um, until next time, may the force be with you. Uh, this is the way. This is the way, I guess. Sure. I mean, I, I didn't use it last I've time. Spoken. I said I have spoken last time for a Mando episode, so this is the way. Punch it! Both of those, both of those terms. Yeah, but Maybe. I don't need to use them anymore. They're done. Buried. Mm-hmm.